This is a demonstration of the Harmonic Lock-in uh, plus PID um, application for Red Pitasha device. Um, here we have the main uh, screen where it's just a, an oscilloscope where you can see the input signals on port uh, input 1 and input 2 of the Red Pitaya. And you have several instruments. Um, here, for example, uh, there is a RAM controller that lets you make a, a RAM scan over one of the ports, uh, output ports of the Red Pitaya. Uh, for example, let's see RAMP, uh, RAMP A. RAMP A and CTRL A are mostly the same, but CTRL A also has the output of the PID A um, added in the signal. So. If we see in the uh, channel A of the oscilloscope that port and we start the scan, we can see, well, that's just uh, a uh, uh, triangular scan. Uh, we can use here the normal uh, features of an oscilloscope like a trigger. And we can control here the limits of the scan and the time, for example, I can make a much slower scan here. Um, well, for example, I can use time like that. So I have the device connected to some other device that is simulating a transition, an optical uh, peak. Uh, spectrum. So I'm going to put the ramp scan on one of the outputs that is, for example, controlling my laser. So in input one and in output one, sorry, uh, I will put the control A and then I will, I will see in the input one the response of the system and you can see there it's just like a peak going down okay well um, for uh, ease of use we can use some ex external trigger and the external trigger is some any trigger that is not uh, attached in the original application and here we can use the scan floor trigger and put the external trigger on on the trigger source. So now the trigger of the triangular scan starts and the zero point starts in the same place of the of the sweep of the triangular signal, the triangular scan. Let's see. Well this is a just a normal scan of some spectral line. We would like to uh, lock the um, laser for example to this peak so the first thing we do is uh, try to get the signal from the locking amplifier implemented as an another instrument here in the uh, in the application in the auxiliary part uh, you can add some modulation to the output with um, uh, it's, it's a modulation with a sinus uh, shape for example the max uh, value you can put here is around 8000 uh, int everything is in int but sometimes shows you the value in volts when you are measuring something uh, in the panel of the application well, so I put some modulation that it's added to the ramp. You don't see it here, but you can see you can see this if you use here to see the output one. There's the the modulation. So we are going to keep using the channel one to see the system response. And well, 
That modulation, uh, of course, would affect the response of the laser and will make will produce some modulation and on the response signal that can, can be demodulated, um, and that's the locking the locking amplifier uh, function. Um, the for example here you can see the period of the modulation it's uh, 49 kilohertz. Uh, you can change this value to other values. I, the max value is this 40, 49 kilohertz in this harmonic uh, application. Um, and all the time, the locking is uh, making the demodulation on the X and Y channels and other channels where you can put some uh, phase relation and you can control everything from here. Um, so, um, on the oscilloscope we can see the X output is the signal you get after the demodulation of the lock-in. Uh, also you can control some parameters here, for example you can make some amplification of the signal. Um, also uh, you can see that uh, the signal itself uh, can be enhanced if you uh, make a more deeper modulation or not. And you can change the parameters of, for example, the low path filter of the locking signal that would affect the shape of the uh, the signal you get, but sometimes you need to change it. Well, that's so. This signal is suitable for um, making a network signal and uh, process it with a PID and add it to the control to just lock to this point, to this uh, zero crossing point. Um, so let's see what happens if we use the PID. Uh, first, we will choose which one is the error signal. For example, X, the X output of the locking amplifier. It's an option. Let's visualize it here. PID A output. Now is nothing, but I put the error signal here, and I see the proportional and integral part. This is not uh, added still to the uh, control signal, but it's useful to see how will react this thing. Oh, it's <laughs> I forgot it was uh, activated. Yeah, now it's not <laughs> added to the to the scan signal to the control A signal. At the output of the signal, you can see that when you go near to the cross zero cruising point, the PID uh, reaction is to um, go more positive, just in the same direction of the ramp. So this will make you go faster to the zero crossing point. But if you go pass through the the zero crossing point, then uh, the signal is negative. So we will try to keep you in this point. So now the signal, the the sign of the parameters of the PID are correct. For example, if I put a minus here. You, this is not correct because here when you try to approach the zero crossing point you get more negative in against the direction of the ramp so let's put this positive also um, here we have 0 0.2 uh, volts of peak when you are uh, near to the zero crossing point near to the peak but that's a lot of uh, amplitude because that's it's similar to move uh, in the um, in the ramp like this amount, and this amount will put you out of the peak. So let's put less uh, amplitude, less strength on the output of the PID. Also, uh, some integral part is uh, always useful. On the 
on the PID to keep the tracking of the of the zero point movement uh, in respect to to the control signal. So when you have the the parameters of the parameters of the PID already chosen, um, you can try to make a, a lock. Let's see now uh, the control signal and let's see the uh, input signal. Now let's see the input signal and the error signal, which will be easier to understand. Yeah, if we make the things correctly, we can lock here and the um, red signal will keep its value around minus 0.4 or something like that and the error signal will go will go to zero. So in the lock control panel you can uh, choose which uh, PID you will uh, turn on when you try to lock and uh, the scan enable is uh, disabled uh, just to say when I push trigger uh, trigger lock I will try to turn on the PID and turn off the scan so you will be attached to the to the peak there's a tool for example this time trigger lets you choose from the plot here the point where you want to start the lock procedure more or less here um, so we will try to lock this point let's see what, ha what happens when I use uh, the lock, the trigger lock on time trigger form, uh, the ramp will go until it reaches this time uh, of the sweep, and in that moment will turn on PID and turn off the the scan. All will happen in just tens of milliseconds, so we we won't see it. Just we will see the screen response trigger lock there it is so the signal starts at uh, uh, kept uh, attached to the peak and uh, the, the spectral response and the error signal goes to zero as it should be so now the screen is frozen frozen because the um, uh, trigger was in normal mode uh, and with the, the external trigger that is the start of the ramp sweep but the ramp is not working anymore so you should go to something like auto mode to see what's going on right now with the signals and there it is the response of the system is attached to uh, uh, to the deeper part of the peak because uh, the PID is all the time stabilizing the, the signal to get um, uh, to get attached to the peak and the error signal uh, sh shown here uh, it goes to zero so uh, when you use this um, error signal selector it's useful because uh, here you can see in int unit uh, int unit is uh, one volt is around 8000 int uh, so in int units you can see the error signal uh, standard deviation and the mean value so you can see here that it's really in the around zero and you can also test uh, the performance of the PID parameters for example if I make it the proportional part bigger um, probably at some time will start to uh, produce some noise and in increase the um, standard deviation here so here you have a um, tool that lets you uh, make numerical estimations of the performance of your um, system
well, right now its behavior is uh, pretty stable, so I put a lot of gain and nothing changed so much. But well, you can test other things here, like for example, what happens if I increase the modulation uh, amplitude. If I put it very high, you can see the the response of the signal changes a lot because we are now sweeping more, much more than the peak of the uh, of the curve. So you can use some of these parameters. Uh, this is the standard vision on one second. Uh, you can use these uh, par uh, tools and these parameters to um, optimize the the parameters of all the instruments and the behavior of, the, of your system. Well, uh, this is just a short demonstration. Uh, sorry for the bad English, but uh, I expect that it's useful for people uh, first trying to make uh, some locking using this application.